Welcome to what I hope will become a at least weekly feature called Track Talks Text. In this program, I want to talk about books that I love and hopefully get you excited about and curious about whether or not you might love them too. And so for the very first episode, I had a very hard time trying to decide on, on a particular text that was going to, that I thought could inspire you and that has inspired me. I thought about starting with Watchmen, I thought about starting with a Batman comic, I thought about starting with the Shakespeare play, but I think to start things off, I wanted to start with this. This is called Superman for All Seasons, and it's a graphic novel. It is a graphic novel that is not currently in the library, but needs to be because it's great. Can you hear that helicopter? You probably can. So the thing about Superman comics, a lot of people, they don't like Superman. It's very hard to beat Superman. It's obviously, like, he's obviously going to win. He's strong, he's fast, he can fly, he's faster than a speeding bullet, he's more powerful than a locomotive, all of that kind of stuff. And he wears pajamas. So people assume that they're not going to like Superman. They assume that these are going to be boring stories and that, you know, he's going to win because he's unstoppable. But the thing that makes Superman interesting is that he is a human being with human frailties just like you and me. And this particular comic book really, really kind of hammers that home and makes you really feel for Superman. Despite the fact that he is not a human being, he is a superpowered alien, he is relatable, he is emotional, he is interesting, he's a compelling character. And that's the awesome, awesome thing about Superman for All Seasons. So Superman for All Seasons, this tells the story of Superman's origins, of course, uh, as any great Superman story does. It tells how he gets to Earth and how he's raised by Ma and Pa Kent and how he grows up in Smallville and is classmates with the guy who is going to one day become his arch-villain, Lex Luthor. And the thing that makes this so interesting is that Lex Luthor and Superman are these character foils of one another. Superman, being super-powered and, and all of these kinds of things, is truly humble. He cares about people. He wants to uh, he wants to connect with people. He wants to have a strong kind of moral fabric that he sticks to. And he struggles very hard to do that, as we all do. We all struggle to decide what's right and what's wrong and whether we can protect the people we love and whether we can be truly good. And meanwhile, Lex Luthor seems to be having the same adventure but making very different decisions. So Lex Luthor, similar to Superman, grows up in Smallville, but he feels that because he has power, because he has influence, because he has money, he also has responsibilities to make the world a better place, and he's going to do it through spending and making money, uh, developing weapons, selling those weapons, and making a fortune, and perhaps along the way, stepping on the little guy, because in the end, the ends justify the means. The thing that Lex Luthor often forgets to do is think about sort of the consequences of what he's doing. Who is he hurting as he develops these weapons? How is he risking the lives of innocent people to, to do great things for, for society? And he's so blinded by this idea that he deserves credit for being great and he's gonna change the world and, and all of this kind of stuff that he hurts people along the way and Superman feels a need to step in and stop him. And so, of course, the two of them keep clashing head on, one time after another, after another, after another. And, of course, as you know, there's no hurting Superman, but there is hurting the people he loves and hurting the city he cares deeply about, which is the Daily Planet. And, or, not the Daily Planet, that's his newspaper, hurting Metropolis. And so Superman grows up in Kansas. He learns to be a good person with his parents who are very simple people who, uh, they're just good farmers who take in an innocent orphan and try to raise them, raise him as best they can. And this simple, humble beginning is what makes Superman a great person and makes him kind of go above and beyond. 
And of course, if you've never heard it before, a great text that you could kind of check out to supplement this and to understand it a little bit better. There's the there's a very famous Crash Test Dummies song, which, you know, it's a little bit slow and I know people don't love it, but it really hammers home this point that, you know, Superman could give up. He could go home, he could go fly off to a desert island and sleep and, and relax and, and watch TV just like you and I would all love to do if we had the chance, but he doesn't do that. He gets up every morning and he sacrifices his comfort, his pleasure, his all these other kinds of things because he cares about doing the right thing, about his duty as an individual, as a person who can do great things, he has a duty to do great things and to look out for other people. And this particular book tells that story in this just like beautiful way. The art style, you know, it makes him look a little bit like he's a thumb. Uh, I get that. But the art style is very, it's kind of, it's its sensitive, it's its raw, it's kind of gentle to him, and it, and it really captures his heart. And so I think that if, you, if you're not sure about Superman, if you're on the fence about Superman, or if you've already like written Superman off, I think you should definitely check this book out. And I hope that, you know, it has an impact for you because it's, it's a pretty darn good book. And, and maybe you'll want to come back and read more Superman books afterwards.